Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today is going to be a full body workout, um, optionally with a band. So if you do not have one of those tight um, circular bands, it's fine. You can still do the workout with that and it's still going to be a pretty challenging workout for your full body. But if you do have a band and you want to just turn up the notch a little bit, especially for your abs and your glutes, totally possible. I'm going to use a medium strength, which I might regret a little bit later, but you can always go light strength as well, whatever you feel like today. But regardless, we're going to get to it. So you are going to sit on your bum. And if you do have a, bu um, a band, let's put it around your thighs. So the thing about these bands is that they inevitably always kind of just curl up to each other becomes this giant rubber band instead of like a flat band. So try to make it flat as possible for when you're starting out, if it, even though eventually it's gonna come back in. And then from here, you are going to lie down on your supine. So supine in Pilates just means that lying on your back. And then your legs will be bent, uh, hips are distance apart, your ankle, your heels will just be a few inches away from you. And then you're gonna have your weight really heavy on your heels, your tailbone, and your back of your ribs. And from here, we're just gonna start with some breathing to start it off. So you're gonna wrap your hands around your rib cage, four finger prints in front, thumbs in the back, kind of like you're wrapping around a giant burrito, but it's your rib cage. And from here, let's inhale, feel the rib cage spread apart into your two hands, and then exhale, feel the rib cage shy away from those hands as they come towards each other. Let's keep going for a few more breaths here. Inhale, spreading that rib cage apart, and then exhale, bring it back in. Two more here, inhale, and exhale. Last one. And then exhale, bring the rib cage back in, narrowing that waistline. We're gonna go into some pelvic tilts. I like to have my hands more of a diamond shape, where so my thumbs and my pointer fingers are together. Bring that diamond shape on top of your pelvis so that thumb is resting right on top of your belly button. So it should be pretty flat right now, which is um, means that you're in a neutral spine, so there's a little slight lift of your, of your lumbar spine off from the floor. From here, exhale, depress your lower back into the floor. Your tailbone might lift up slightly, that's your tuck. Inhale, draw it back in, into a neutral spine. Exhale, tuck, and inhale, draw it back in. So these are super tiny range of movements, right? So these are just pelvic hinges, warming up your lower abs and that lower back here. Just to train your body to know what a neutral spine feels like as well. Let's just go for two more. You should still feel those knees over those hips as well. So there is a little bit of tension in the back if you do have one. Last one. And bring it back down. So you're still in that neutral spine. Just a little side of a blueberry might just fit under that lower back. And from here, slowly, can you bring one leg up and the other leg up as well? So you're in a tabletop. You can even flex those feet as well. Knees are over those hips, having your hands still by your hips just for a little bit of feedback. Let's keep going with those tucks, tucks. Flatten out that lower back. And then draw it back down. Exhale, flatten that lower back into the floor. And then draw it back in. Really good. So that knee is still over those hips, even when you tuck. There is some temptation to bring those knees in towards your face every time you tuck. You're like rocking at your hips. Don't do that. At most, the knees should be more going towards those ceiling every time you tuck. You should feel that lower abs start to fire up a little bit as you're going into these mini pelvic tucks as well. Especially because you're not relying on those legs to just hinge up the hips for you anymore. So I guess in like more planes man's terms as well, this is kind of more of like a reverse crunch for a lot of people. But again, try not to rock your hips so that your legs go woo towards your forehead. We're just here for two more. Last one. 
and then bring those legs back down, shake it off. And you're gonna wrap your hand around your head, the base of your head here. I like to cross my hands, you're kind of so it's creating a hammock. Reach your elbows up towards the ceiling, you're gonna nod and curl up, look towards your knees, and then lower back down. Exhale, look towards your knees into that nod and curl, and then bring it back down. Can you make sure that you maintain that neutral spine underneath your lower back? So there's still a little bit of a space. A lot of people do say to tuck your pelvis here if you do feel a little bit of lower back tension, but we do want to practice and challenge ourselves to maintain that neutral spine whenever we do our ab work here, which will make it a little bit more um, effective. So if you do feel a little bit of lower back tension, either yes, tuck your pelvis, or just give me your range of motion of how high you're coming up. But overall, I want your shoulders to lift up every time you nod and curl up. Also, every time you come up, can you look into your abs as well? Make sure it's not pouching up, that it's tucked up and in towards your sternum. So you're keeping your core still active. We're just here for two more. And last one. Can we hold at the top? From here, you're gonna lift both legs up back into that tabletop. So into that neutral spine hold. From here, can you um, abduct that right leg out a few inches away from you and bring it back in? So you're basically just kicking the right leg out, separating it out from the center a few inches out and then back in. Super simple here. Left leg does not follow here. So it's really time to this twist the entire body here. So instead of that, keep that left leg super still, right leg that separates out, and in. You're challenging those obliques here as you're just controlling with that unilateral movement. If this is too much to keep your um, head lifted, you can always just bring it down as well and just focus on that lower body. But for that little extra fire, keep those shoulders lifted up. We're just here for two. Keep that left knee over that left hip, guys. Do not rotate with it. Bring it back in. This time the right leg does not move. Left leg separates at and bring it back in. Again, in the physiology terms, you are just abducting that left leg out. So separate the left leg out from the center and bring it back in. Again, this time the right leg stays super still, guys. It is not rotating towards the left. Keep that breath going. And two. The last one, and bring it back in, and from here we're going to separate both legs out, and bring it back in, both legs out, and bring it back in. If you want to add some coordination, you can separate it out, and curl everything back in. Separate out. Just go for four or more. And you're gonna hold at the top. In two. Last one. Hold, extend both legs up towards the ceiling. Bring both hands up towards the toes. You're gonna to be pulsing up and pulsing up. Sending the shoulders up and up. We're just here for eight more counts. Six. And four. And last two. And last one. Bring it back in. Squeeze your knees in towards your chest. Shake it off. Really good. We're gonna do just one more um, series of exercises with your abs here. So from here, again, your hands are gonna come behind your head. Let's bring your right leg up the tabletop, yeah? And from here, you're gonna vote 
lift it up and rotate towards your right knee and bring it back to center. Rotate and bring it back to center. So you are rotating your thoracic spine here. So your rib cage is twisting. Sending your left shoulder blade towards your right hip. Really great. If you want to advance this, you can bring both legs up to tabletop every time you rotate or send the left leg out every time you rotate for a more classic bicycle. We're just here for five more. And four. And three. You're gonna hold up that rotation, of course. In two. Last one, hold that rotation, hold. Can you just pulse your knee in towards your face, in towards your face? Especially if you have a band, that tension is going to really work your obliques here. We're just here for five and four. Can you really lift those shoulder blades up and off? And three, two, one. Bring it back in. Whew. Bring your legs back down. Let's go to the other side. Right leg is just grounded. Left leg is in tabletop. You're going to nod and curl up. Rotate towards the left and center. Rotate towards the left and center. Really great, guys. Again, if you want to do those extra variations here, go for it. So either both legs are in tabletop or extend the right leg out long every time you rotate towards the left. Your choice, but no matter what it is, we're just here for four more. Can we exhale every time you twist? Giving your abs just a little bit more space to twist, yeah? We're just here for last two. You are going to hold up at that last one, hold. Pulse your knee, your left knee in towards your face, in towards your face. We're just here for eight and seven. Keep that right hip really grounded so it's not lifting up and over towards the left side. And five, four, three, two, and last one, bring it back in. Whew. So I know I said that earlier, that was the last ab series, but I forgot that I taught another one. So. We're going to do one more. Whew. So this time, again, still focusing on those obliques, but we're going to be focused, we're going to be doing more hip rotation, not the thoracic rotation that we just did. So challenging your body in different ways. So you're going to be legs and tabletop. Hop your hands by your side for a little bit of more support. Your legs are slightly separated, so it's hips a distance apart, so knees over those hips. You can even flex those feet as well, if that helps you. And from here, you're going to rotate those knees those towards the right. So your hips are rotated. Come back to center. Rotate towards the left. And come back to center. Super simple to start. So your hips, your opposite hip might feel that slight lift up. That's totally fine. But you do not want the rib to lift up. So those two ribs are super still heavy on towards the floor and the mat but those hips are rotating. This is just to ensure that you're not going crazy. It's a range of motion and lifting everything up. This is not a stretch, guys. This is all about control. If you then want to advance it, have your hands behind your heads once again. Not a curl up and maintain that as you're rotating. So a little bit more control here. If you again want to advance it even more, you can make that little leg that long every time you rotate, bring it back towards center, rotate, extend, bend, center. So kind of like a pan can dancer, that's how I imagine it. So this is really working those lower obliques here as we're focusing on that control with that hip rotation, but still keeping that thoracic spine super stable. We're just for here for a few more reps here, guys. 
And then, of course, we are going to pulse to finish it out. And two. Last one on each side. And then when your legs are extended out towards the right side, you get a hold. Keep up your left, it might be slightly lifted. You're going to be pulsing up and pulsing up. Whew. If you want to keep those legs bent here, that's fine as well. Or for that extra challenge, keep those legs extended and pointed up. You're just here for six and five, four, three, two, one, immediately towards the other side. Again, extend, extend or flex the legs, pulsing up and pulsing up. You're just here for eight, six, four, two, last one, bring it back in. Shake it off. That band is still over your legs, guys. What a mirror the class it will be. <sighs> All right, have your feet by your side. Back into the seat front, have your hands by your side. Let's go into some bridging just to open up those hips as well, since we kept those in tabletop for a while, so your hip flexors might feel a little wonky. So have your hands by your side. You're going to go into some bridging. So just like we did earlier, you're going to tuck that pelvis, and from that tucked pelvis, you are going to peel that spine up one vertebrae at a time. So you're in a bridge, keeping those knees over those heels, as you see. There is a little tension on that strap. If you do have that strap around your thighs, especially because your knees have to be over your heels, they're not knocking in towards each other or two away. Keep tucking that pelvis. You're not seeing any creases in front of your pants, your leggings, keeping those glutes still squeezed. And your um, upper spine is still pretty grounded on towards the floor. You're not going to a crazy bridge here like yoga. So you're in a nice, Diagonal from your shoulders towards your knees. Have your hands by your side. Inhale. Exhale. Let's melt down from the sternum as you roll yourself down one vertebrae at a time, giving your spine a nice massage. Go back into the neutral spine. Tuck that pelvis as you exhale up. Have a little sip of air at the top. Exhale. Melt yourself down one. Let's just do a few more of these spinal articulations. It should also feel really nice. It's kind of like a nice massage that you're giving yourself. If you do want to open up your shoulders even more here, you can even have your hands facing up. And then melt yourself. And for this final one, you are going to hold at the top. Hold at the top. Knees are over those heels. Just like you did earlier with those abs, um, Siri, you're going to just act up the right leg out a few inches and bring it back in. Ooh, got a little head click here. Right leg out and in. So again, the left leg does not follow here. If you do want a little bit more challenge, if you're feeling pretty stable with your hips, you can even have your arms lifting up a few inches off the floor or towards the ceiling here. So that you're relying less on your triceps and more on those glutes to keep you up. We're just here for three. And two. Last one. Bring it back into our center. Right leg stays still. Left leg fans out. Left leg comes back. Left leg fans out and comes back. Can you try to make sure those hips are stable, that they're staying pretty aligned? We're just here for four and three and two. Last one, bring it back to center. Of course, both knees fan out and back in. Out and in. Really great there. You're starting to get a little bit more of those glute meat, those outer glute here, especially if the bound is around your thighs. Still keep those hips lifted. 
Put a little, a lot of weight on your heels here, guys. The more weight you have on your heels, the more pressure you're gonna feel in those glutes. You're gonna desk here for four. Oh man, my band is starting to curl up towards each other. And three. And two. Last one. Damn it. <laughs> Bring it back to the center. You're just gonna pulse up and up. Pulse your glutes up, even though my band curled up towards you. All right, let's do that. We're gonna do this here for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Shine it up and roll yourself down one vertebrae at a time. Whew. Shake it off. Now that your glutes and your back side of your legs are a little bit more warmed up, we're going to really target it by going into some sideline leg series. So first, bring your knees in towards your chest. Curl up your head one last time. Let's roll on up a few inches a few times. Rolling like a ball. At the top, you can even challenge yourself of whether you can balance on your sacrum. This is an actual Pilates exercise, guys. I am serious. Try not to land your feet on towards the floor here, using your abs to just balance. Last one. And come up. All right, cool. So your band is still around your thighs. If you need to readjust them like I need to right now, go for it. All right, you are going to go on your right side. Um, on your forearms. And then make sure those hips are um, aligned towards your shoulders here. Your shoulders are over that forearm as well. Bend your legs so that you are in a tabletop like you're sitting. And you're stacking your top leg over the bottom. So, so pretty classic sideline leg series. And from here, can you extend the top leg out long? away from you. So you're really lengthening out the top leg away from you, lengthening out that spot, um, the side body, so in that bottom oblique, just lift up. Beautiful. And from here, just lift up one inch and lower an inch. Lift up and lower. Really good. So it's a pretty simple movement here, which is why I want you to really focus on keeping your form all aligned to start it off. So I like to have my top hand on my top hip here to make sure that the mid hips are stacked and that my top hip isn't going anywhere. If you do have a little bit of a neck tension here, you can always look down and towards your bottom forearm as well. That's totally fine to lengthen out that neck. You're not changing the exercise, so don't worry. Really great, guys. Try not to collapse in your bottom shoulder here, so keep lifting up and away from that bottom forearm. We're just here for two. Last one, keep it lifted. Can you bring it to the tabletop? And then kick it back out. Bring it to the tabletop, flexing that knee and that hip, and extend it out all along. Every time you extend that leg, you are you should feel the back of your glute fire up. We're just here for two. The last one. Extend it out long. Hold. From here, can you flex that top foot? You're gonna rotate it so the toes reach up toward the ceiling. And then enter and rotate toes face down. Toes, externally rotate toe up and down. So I know I'm using toes like as a cue, but in reality, your entire thigh bone is rotating within that hip socket. So especially if you have your hand on top of your hip, you should feel that entire thigh bone just rotating within that hip socket like a screwdriver. That's where the real movement driver is coming from, not just the ankle. You're just lubricating that joint a little bit more. We're just here for two. Last one, you're gonna hold that externally rotated so that knee and those toes are reaching up towards the ceiling. Keep it that externally rotated. Can you um, bend those knees 
and bring it back out. So you might be a little bit more of like a butterfly knee. So the knees are reaching up towards the ceiling every time you bend. So because your top leg is externally rotated, it's easy to send that top hip back towards the behind of you. Fight against that temptation. So even if it means that you're limiting your range of motion of how much you're externally rotating, you want to keep that hip stacked the entire time. That's the whole point of the exercise, is to really stabilize those hips. We're just here for three. And two. Last one, hold. Can you glue those heels together? You're gonna go into a clamshell. I know, shocker. So that's gonna be more of a challenge to keep those heels lifted. If this is too much, you can always lower those heels and just keep going to the external rotation. I like to challenge myself a little bit more today. We're just here for five. You just feel a slight shake here. Even if you don't have a band on, this should be quite challenging. And two. You're going to hold it up at the top. Hold. And you pulse it out and pulse it out. So you're just opening the knee out and out. We're just here for six, five, four, three, two, one. Bring it back down. Punch it out. That glute should be on fire. And then you are going to lie on your side. So extend that bottom arm out to create yourself a little pillow. You can extend both legs out long as well. So you're in a nice long line. I like to have my top hand in front of me on my chest as well here just to give myself a little bit more support because it's easy to wiggle and wobble here. So extend those legs out long, those ankles, point those toes out. And from here, zip those two legs together and you're gonna lift those legs up and down. So it's kind of like you're creating a banana shape with your legs. Every time you lift it up, you should feel that bottom, top oblique work. And also those inner thighs are working. So again, you should feel those core work, that core working as well, because you're trying to keep yourself stacked and balanced here. So if you want that challenge, you can have your top hand on your top hip. And fight against the wibbles and wobbles. If that's too much, have your top hand in front of you. So that's for a little bit more support. That top glute, that side glute should still be working here as well, just like we warmed up with that side line. Larry, leg series. Who am I pronunciation? We're just here four, four. You're gonna keep that lifted up in three, in two. The last one, keep it lifted up slightly, hold. Lower that bottom leg, lift it up. Lower that bottom leg and lift it up. Keep that top leg pretty lifted a little bit. So you're challenging that bottom leg a little bit more. We're just here for four and three and two. Your top leg should be on fire, last one. Hold it up once again, can you scissor it? So top, bottom leg goes forward, top leg goes back and then switch and then switch those legs are never touching the floor keep that core tight keep bringing the belly button up and in toward that sternum to help you with your balance here we're just here for five more and four let's try with my hand on my hip and three. Ah! Yep. And two. Last one. And bring it back in. Shake it off. And then let's go directly to the other side. Oh my gosh, my hair is going all crazy here now. That's the sign of a good workout, yeah? All right. We're going to start with just a sideline leg series. So. So go on your forearm, on your left side, making sure the shoulders are stacked on your forearm. Bend your legs, make sure that hip is aligned to your torso because it's really easy always to bring your hips forward here. Bend your legs into a tabletop and then you are going to send that leg out long, extending those toes away from you. As you extend it out, really feel that 
waistline really lengthen out and feel that bottom waistline lift up. You want to keep that length of your side bodies here. Have your top hand on your top hip. You're going to lift it up and lower. Top leg lifts up and lower. Really good, guys. So again, for this first variation, just check in with your landmarks. Make sure that you're not collapsing into that bottom shoulder. You're keeping that lifted up. That top hip is stacked up over that bottom hip. And again, you can always look down towards the bottom forearm if your neck is bothering you. Let that breath help you here. Really keep that top leg super strong and long. We're just here for four. You're gonna keep it lifted up to hips of distance in three and two. Last one, keep it lifted, hold. From here, you're going to bend that leg into a tabletop and then send it out long. Bend it back in and send it out long. So every time you send that leg out long, really squeeze that back butt cheek. As that's the main muscle that you're working here every time you send that leg out long. Try to make sure that you're not collapsing in that bottom shoulder again. Constantly remind yourself to keep that bottom waistline lifted. Your core is still working here, even though mainly you're feeling that glute. We're just here for two. You're gonna hold it, extend it out. In one, keep it extended, hold, flex that foot. And as externally rotate, toes facing up. Interior rotating, toes facing down. That leg is still lifted, guys, into our hips a distance apart. I know it's tempting to lower that leg a few inches down to slightly cheap, but let's not. And again, if your top, top hand is on your top hip, you should feel that entire thigh bone just rotating underneath that hand, just for a little bit more feedback. Really good, guys. Try to really exaggerate that external and internal rotation here. We're just here for two. Last one. Can you hold that external rotation? Hold, keep that leg lifted. You're gonna bend it in and out. So kind of like a butterfly every time you bend it in and out. Make sure that top knee is going towards the ceiling here. And make sure that top hip is not sliding towards the back. It's still stacked up. You're just here for six. And five. And four. And three. And two. Last one, hold that bend, hold. Glue those heels together this time. Close it in and open it up into that clamshell immediately. Whew. You can still keep those heels lifted up if you still want that fire, or you can lower those heels down towards the floor just for a little bit more stability. But regardless, you're still gonna feel that side glute of your right side. We're just here for six and five. You're gonna hold it out in four, in three, in two, last one, Ex X-ray rotate, hold, open it out, you're gonna be pulsing out and pulsing out, we're just here for eight, seven, this is your final one, six, five, four, three, two, one, bring it back in, Whew. and punch it out. Let's lie down on your belly immediately. That strap is still around your thighs, unfortunately. All right, so now you're in a prone, which just basically means you're on your belly. So widen those legs, those hips a distance apart a little bit. So you're kind of like in a X with your body. Have your hands by your shoulders. Whew. And from here, let's just go into a baby cobra here. So tuck that pelvis. So we lengthen out that lower back really Pressing the pubic bone in towards the floor. Lift that belly button up and in towards your 
um, towards your spine as if there's an ice cube underneath that belly button. So those abs are never resting. And from here, can you extend those spines so you're li lifting your upper chest up a few inches and then lower it down. You're setting those legs out so long behind you that you can feel the thigh bone slightly lift up. Hold up top and exhale, bring it back up. If you want a little bit more challenge, you can even cross your hands here and then glue it towards your forehead so your entire arms lift up. So a little bit less support and more on your back. Inhale, lift up. Exhale. Try to make sure that the back of that neck is really long, so you're really shooting the top of the crown away from you every time you extend. Keeping the back of that neck and that spine super long. So it's not about really overly extending that lower back into like arching, you're really maintaining that length and growing that spine as long as possible. Let's just go for two more here. It should feel really nice to extend that spine after all that flexion in the beginning. Last one. Can you hold here? You're gonna lift your right leg up a few inches, lower, left leg up a few inches, lower. Right, left, right, left. You are slightly swimming with your legs. You can hold with your arms here as well, more like a goal post, or extend it out, or go on alternating. Like you're really swimming. We're just gonna be here for 10 and nine, keep the back of the neck long, and eight and seven, six, five, four, last three, two, and last one. Bring it back in. You can bend your legs, swing it left and right. Loosen up any tension you might have felt in your lower back here. Awesome. Let's go directly into a plank. So shoulders over those hands. And when you are ready, let's extend it out. You are in a plank. So again, spine is really long. Keep the crown of the head pointing away from you, like towards a window like I am. Flex those feet, tuck that pelvis so you're not arching it like this, you're really tucking it up and in. So you're one straight line from your heels to the crown of the head. Squeeze those glutes, lift those abs up and away from the floor for that perfect plank. From here, let's hold and let's abduct the right leg out, outside of the mat, Bring it in, left leg out, and in, right leg out, in, and in, right and left, right and left. Really great. If you want to bring up your cardio a little bit more, you can go out and in, but I'm not going to do that because <laughs> I am already sweating. So when I'm filming, I can't really keep the fan on or the AC on because it adds way too much audio noise. So I am in this greenhouse room with no air. And so I'm also sweating profusely. Hope you can't see me like that closely. We're just here for four and three and two. Last one. And bring it back in. Go into quick child's pose. Whew. Really great. All right, we're going just to do one last ab exercise. So turn on your butt. Finally, let's take that strap off, if you had it on, and you're going to land it in your hands. <sighs> Sit on high on your sit bones. Get rid of some fleshiness if you need to, so it's really not that bony marks. Keep your feet grounded, hips distance apart. Sit up tall on your sit bones here. Whew. Have your hands reaching out ahead in front of you. So you're super tall here. You're gonna go in some roll down series here. So you're gonna tuck that pelvis into a C curl, roll yourself down in one. 
vertebrae at a time. Hold up that bottom while we bring those belly button up and in. Those arms are out, reached out, inhale. Exhale, using your abs, stack your spine back up. One, vertebrae at a time. Now you're back in tall. Let's keep going with that exhale. Tailbone tapped under, roll yourself in. One, vertebrae at a time. Those hands still have a little tension in that strap here, which is making you keep your shoulders really plugged in and reminding you to keep those rib cage really closed and knitted in towards each other. So just a little bit more feedback with that strap. And set roll yourself up one. Put it right at the time. We're just here for two more here. Gonna scoot a few inches forward. And can you hold at the bottom? From here, those that strap still has tension. You're gonna lift it up a few inches, as if you're giving yourself a halo, and lower it down. Lift it up towards your ears, and lower it down. You're still maintaining that C curl with your abs. So your spine is still flexed. Every time you lift your arms up, you should feel the slight shake of your upper abs. I know I am. We're just here for six more. And five. And four. And three. Last two. Last one. Of course, you're going to pulse it out to have your arms out, reach in front of you again. You're going to just abt up those arms out and out. So really just squeeze, um, stretching that band away from you. We're just here for eight, seven, six, five. Just a little bonus round on your outer deltoids here. And four, three, two, one. Roll yourself up. Shake it off, get rid of some sweat if you need to. Whew. And one final ab series. You're gonna roll yourself down, back into that T curl, and hold. Arms are still out, stretch. Can you lift your right leg up to tabletop? Even tap that band if you want to. Lower it down, left leg up, and lower it down. So you can keep going at that single leg tabletop here. If you want to advance, you can just go through, bring both sides up the tabletop and tap it one at a time. So more like a marching sensation. But no matter what, can you make sure that that entire thigh bone is moving? So you're not just bending and straining like at the knee joint. You're actually moving the thigh bone in towards your chest every time you lift up. We're just here for eight. No matter what leg variation you're choosing. And six. And four. And two, and of course, both legs up and tabletop, hold. You are in your teaser, can you hold? If you want, can you even extend those legs out long? Can you hold? Arms out towards your ears, can you hold? Three big breaths, inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Last one, inhale. And exhale, bring it back down. Whew. Bend your knees, open out to a butterfly. And just roll on in down towards it. Get rid of that band. You're done with it. Really great job, guys. Let's go into a quick stretch. So let's go back on your hands and your knees. Shoulders stack up over your hands, hips over your knees. Let's go into some cat cows. You're going to arch your spine, looking up toward the ceiling. Really splay those hip points away from each other. And then exhale, round that spine as you look down towards your belly button. Really sending the back of the ribs up towards the ceiling, exaggerating that cat. And then go into a cow. Bring it back in. If at any point, you want to go into some side bends here and to go into a whole disc 
disco kitty action of going to a full circle. Go for it as well, if that feels nice. This is just the time for some restorative, especially we did a ton of spine flexion. So it's really nice to just loosen it up, yeah? Really great, let's go into the child's pose, setting those hips heavy towards your heels, setting those arms out away from you. Elbows are even slightly lifted as you really extend those arms out. You can even send your arms towards hands towards the left side here. Put a little bit more weight on towards your right hip so you really feel that side stretch of your right side. Crawl your fingers towards the left. Put your weight on towards your left hip so you feel that left side stretch. Lie down on your back. So that we can do a supine twist. So bring your legs in tabletop. Your left leg will be on your right knee. And then pull that right thigh towards you. <sighs> to open up your left hip here. Let's just do big, three big breaths here. Inhale. <sighs> and exhale. This is always my favorite stretch. Two more. <sighs> Last one. Keep those legs still into that figure four. Have your hands by your side into an outstretch. You can twist it out towards the right. Twist your hip, the legs towards the right, and you're gonna look towards the left. Getting to a nice supine twist. Keep your left shoulder still heavy if you can. Two more breaths here. Last one. Bring it back to center. Let's switch those legs. Now the right leg goes on that left knee. Flex that right foot to protect that right knee. And bring it in. Pull it in towards your chest. Opening that right hip this time. Well, thank you for moving with me. If you made it this far. And um, if you could give any comments or feedback into the comment section below, that would be super helpful as well. Um, it is my first foray to YouTube Pilates, so I'm really interested in what you guys think. And if you guys haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Let's go rotate towards the left and rotate up and then look towards the right. But if you haven't subscribed yet, please sub hit subscribe for continued Pilates videos or even just lifestyle wellness videos as well. And if you forgot my name, my name is Michelle. Bring it back to your center, roll up. And thank you for moving with me. Hope you guys are sweaty as I am because I really am sweaty. My braid is all gone, all my hair is all crazy. But regardless, hope you guys have a great, lovely day, night, wherever you guys are. And I will see you next class. Thanks, guys.